I'm going to leave it on there and I'm going to start at the top doing our water and the colours I'm using today are Atelier Interactive once again they're an acrylic you just hold those there for us then we'll just zoom in there we so go Phalo Turquoise Cobo Coal boat turquoise in the light hue, that's they're both aqua colours. They're um, artist quality paints, and then I've moved to a student quality paint um, which is Chroma, and it's in a much bigger tube, so it's really good if you're on a budget. That's a phthalo blue and phthalo green, and you also get it in a bigger tube, so they're terrific. And titanium white which I buy in a jar because it, I use so much white and you'll find you'll use <laughs> two tubes of white to one tube of paint probably. Put my colours out on my palette and today my palette is just a plastic picnic plate. Um, it's nice and light and you can throw it away afterwards. You keep using it for a while. Uh, anything with a white background is best. So now we'll start painting. Do you always tend to use the same colours, those basic ones you just mentioned then, for your background, for the sea water? Yes, I do because I want most of them as aqua. Um, the water near the reef is really light and aqua. It's not, you don't get dark, deep water, so I tend to stay with those colours. You can have it more blue if you want or whatever. So I've put a lot of white on there. And I'm going to use a little, just a sponge. I just can get in the cheap shops or even in art supplies because it's nice and soft to use. Okay. Do you need to dip that in water? Yes. You do? Okay. On a day like today, the paint's dry really quick. I use a lot of water. Um, you can spray it if, they get, if it gets too dry too quickly. I'm going to move this canvas across a little bit so that I'm not reaching too far because painting can be quite hard work, particularly if you're a little bit older or you've got a few back problems that I seem to have. <laughs> you need to be able to reach your work. So bring the canvas to you instead of overstretching out. That's right, yeah. yeah. If you're young and energetic, it's a good workout. <laughs> but if you're not, which a lot of us are not, you'll we'll do it the easiest way you can. I'm just using the um, light turquoise in here up the top and lots of white the light turquoise and lots of white light, that yeah was? of titanium yeah. white sorry yeah no that's all right just making sure we have comes together quite quickly um it does you need a brush for this size canvas you need a brush that size yeah or um 
tool like this, a sponge, it's so good using a small brush because you're there forever and you can't get the same effect. And you need to paint your sides as you go along. Yes, don't you need drips. Even I notice paintings now, Mum, when I'm out and about. And I think, they didn't paint their edges. <laughs> There's two schools of thought on that. Some Is there really? Yeah. Um, if you paint, if your canvas is going to be framed, it doesn't matter. But a lot of canvases today aren't framed at all. Oh, so okay. when you walk into a room, you'll see that edge. So you need to do your sides. I like to do my sides, whatever I'm painting here, I like to have there the same colour. When I do the coral, I carry the coral around the side. Oh, so wow. once again, when you walk into a room, sometimes you can see that edge. The other school of thought is you paint the edges all one colour. Um, that looks all right, but I like to do the edges. It's yep. just a bit more professional, I think. And especially, like, at the moment, you're just using a thinner canvas for demonstration purposes. Yeah, so I usually, yeah, I usually use an inch and a half thick one, triple thickness. Yeah, so you'd really notice the edge on those ones. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm learning so much doing this with you. <laughs> no, I'll just film you doing it. Into the white again. So by having it lighter up there, that's going to be the light source and we're sort of going to be looking up at it so it would be very light at the top and come down a little bit darker but not very much. I could put another colour in there somewhere. We don't have to have waves or anything like that. What? And why always, not? <laughs> well, you can, but that's a more traditional way of painting. I'm painting in a contemporary way. Yep. And for beginners, I think it's good to just have a simple background. When I first started out, I just used to do it one colour. But a few different colours in there still makes it look like um, water. Oh, they definitely, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I suppose you're underwater as well, not, it's not a shoreline or anything, so you don't have to worry about waves. That's right, yeah, you're It's a bit dark. Um, the other thing, make sure the brush strokes all go across the canvas because you won't find the water's running down like that. Doesn't run downhill in the ocean. <laughs> um, so, paint that out real quick before that dries. I don't usually bother about drips, so they can just be incorporated in. So, don't panic too much if you get a drip here or there? No, sometimes they're happy mistakes. <laughs> Concentrate on this size at the moment because it's drying fairly quick. Just simple random restatching strokes sort of like that. A little bit of that fallow green going in there now. Go on to the edge. Now I want to soften that little bit there. 
I'm going to use a, a Tilia Fine Mist Water Sprayer. You can um, get them from your art supply shop or you can use a good old normal water sprayer. For this though, I want a very fine mist, so I'm just going to mist that. So why do you want a fine mist for that particular bit? Well, I've just sort of put it on like that. I want to blend it and I'm going to use a nice dry mop brush. Um, I said in one of my other tutorials, these can be makeup brushes um, that you put your makeup on with or your blusher. Uh, they're a lot cheaper than buying the artist quality ones and they're, they're just as good. Yeah. So just a nice soft brush. Now that that's wet, you should be able to just blend it just softly. Now I left it too long because I was talking and I've got little dots there that, that might not matter. This side wasn't too bad. This brush needs to be very dry and you need to keep it clean or it won't work. going on fairly quickly with this sponge, that's good. Keep using a bit more white through there in the middle. I think we're going fairly quickly at the moment. Like yeah. We need to speed it up. Okay. Because I'm using the sponge and it's spreading really good, so mm -hmm. we'll do it in real time. Okay, lovely. today it's not summer yet it's only spring but that's beautiful we oh. do have the air conditioner on in the background <laughs> we're hoping it's not going to be too loud but we won't be able to do it otherwise it just gets quite tropical in the summer we've got to get these in before the wet season or we won't be doing it at all with tin roof <laughs> that's right Yes, it can get quite loud in here when it rains.
So I've just touched the phthalo blue there, just a tiny bit because it's very dark. And actually, I touched it by mistake, but it's working out quite good. Just add another colour anywhere it's a little bit deeper down there on this painting. Anyway, it's not very much deeper. Put white with that. Just add a little bit of colour here and there. Remember, keep strokes going across. It's a water, unless it's a waterfall, it doesn't run down the hill. <laughs> now we're coming down to the um, texture paste we put on earlier. It's nearly dry, it's not dry enough to paint over, but I'm going to carry the water down as much as I can and around it. You might ask, why am I doing that? Why are you doing that, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here to help. <laughs> I'm doing that because you'd have to put too much coral in there and the water seeps in and out of the coral and, and I'm going to have fish in there so we've got to have the water for the fish to swim in. So that's the reason for that, Lynn. Yes, I did ask that. I have asked that question a couple of times. <laughs> Now that drip, I don't want to be there. Don't panic if, if the drip happens. Just wipe it off with your varnish with acrylic. You can paint over it. It's only a piece of canvas. Don't get scared. You can kind of ruin it. I'll have to be a bit careful in here. I'll probably have to touch this bottle up later because this isn't totally dry down there. The modelling, mm. what's it called? Modelling paste? Modelling paste, yeah. Mm. If you didn't have it there, you would paint the water all the way down without having to go around things. It's this thick paste at the bottom which is going to be a hard coral and it's, it comes in a jar like this, it's just really thick paste. This one's by Atelier and there are other brands on the market. I'm sure Golden, which um, a lot of you overseas people use, would have it, something similar. It's a bit hard to go back over this when the paint's drying because you can lift the paint off. So I would probably leave most of that and work on the coral and then, because the coral's not going to go right up into there, later on I can come back in and do more to it if I want to. But we've got a nice sort of light bit up the top. It's a good idea too to, <clears throat> not saying that we need a break, but um, get up and step away from it sometimes and have a look. Do you do that very often or do you find you just I sit there? To, and... Yeah, I plan to, but I tend to just <laughs> paint and paint and paint and then I decide that I need a break, I need a coffee or water or something. So now I'm going to, this is too clumsy for me in here. I'm going to put that in my water and I'm going to change over to a brush. I've got a nice new brush today, so I'll brush the water in around here. It'll be much easier for me to control with me. Okay, yeah. I'll just zoom in if you can keep doing that 
section there. Keep dipping into the water because it's just drying. The advantage with a tillier is you can um, come back or if it's dry put water on it as I did up there and it re-wets re itself and you can keep painting. A lot of the other acrylic plates don't do that. Oh really? What they just dry out? This is why they call it interactive. Yeah, they dry once it's on there, it's on there. You've got to put another layer over the top. Look, move the canvas back that side. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Does that help? Yeah. <laughs> you moved over. I, I missed that bit. Sorry, people. Well, down in here, we don't really need waves or anything like that. We just need a bit of colour so that something for fish to swim in. So I'm using that photo green and photo blue and white quite a bit. I only really use the two colours in all of this. Each painting is different. Continue around the edges. Need some more white. I can see why you buy white by the jar then. <laughs> yes. You need to buy a litre jar, I think. Are you finding that the modelling paste is dry enough to paint over in that time? Probably, yeah. Probably could. You're just doing sort of in between that at the moment? I might end up down the bottom here. I might turn that into sand later on. See what happens when we start with the corals because the corals tend to take over once they get going. In my work anyway. <laughs> I'm going to move the canvas up onto the next level because it's a bit hard at the bottom. Is that all right Leanne? Uh, yes, that's just lovely, thank you. So again that's like what we were mentioning before about bringing the canvas to you so you don't end up doing your back and stuff. Yes. That's a bit awkward to paint. Do you paint on the table sometimes? Put it flat or? Um, if I'm using drip techniques and inks I do mm -hmm. or something very small but not very often because I find that's too taxing as well. Up on the easel, and it pays to get up, stand up, go back and have a look at your work every yeah. so often. Sitting here, or if you're standing, you can't get the same effect when it's just up close. Well, it looks great from back here oh. where I am, but I'm, I'm sure there'll be, I can imagine what you're going to say when you have a look. <laughs> See bits I don't even think about. Now, if there's beginners painting along, you need to make sure you've got plenty of paint on your canvas 
You don't want to see the little squares of the paint of the canvas showing through. Uh, a lot of beginners make that mistake. They don't put enough paint on their brush. And a section there. If you can see there. I'll zoom in. Hold on. Oops. Okay, yep, that's good. That section there, you don't want it to look like that. Um, oh, I see. You can see the line. Paint on. You can see the white coming through. Um, and it just doesn't look right. Um, up there, I might need to put more later on, as I said, when it dries. So, lots of paint. It'll make the work look a lot better in the long run. That's a good tip to learn right off the bat. Do you find that something that your students have done regularly as you teach over the years? Definitely. Yes, yeah, so I don't use that. Put out a tiny little bit of paint. Um, some teachers say don't put too much out because it dries too quick and all that. But if, particularly if you mix in colours, you need to have a good amount mixed up because unless you're experienced, it's very hard to match it back up again. And this is the advantage of using Artillia Interactive because you can re-wet it. Like this palette here, I will leave when we have a break and that would, normal acrylics that would dry, this will stay workable. So I can spritz over the top, I can put Glad Wrap then over that okay. and leave it and I could leave that for an hour and then come back and reuse it. How long would it last like that? Longer than an hour or? Well, it could do, I can really test it because once I start I usually keep going <laughs> till I've used up all the paint. in there for fish to swim around. A lot of this is going to be covered up with coral so you won't see it. And it's just little bits if you do, it's nice to have it in there. And that texture paint is, texture paste is hard enough already, dry enough. Oh that's good. how we put the background on or what underwater scene. I think we'll have to let this dry for a little while. Yep. And um, we'll stop and come back to it. Okay, that looks so we don't well, question, probably a silly question. <laughs> so we don't paint blue on the modelling paste. We don't have to worry about painting that blue. It's just more in between the modelling paste. Yes, in, in between. Um, yeah. Because the modern place is going to be coral and it's not going to be blue coral. No. It's going to be a colour. Yeah. And all our coral anyway, whatever corals we put on, we'll have to paint white again. Oh, right. Mm. So there's a little bit involved yeah. in that. 